So it's been a little while since the last partner series and that's down to two things, being incredibly busy and COVID. The being busy part is basically just us frantically working to get all the orders out the door and to you ASAP, but also generating the vast amount of supporting things for each new release, whether it be the booklets or the collector's cards, the shippers, the promotional marketing content, all of these things require a, a lot of work. It's a feather in our cap, I guess, to be able to produce these things all in-house. Um, we keep maximum control over the whole process and we get exactly what we want. But in doing all of that stuff, it means that other things, like this video series and the updates, it means that they kind of slip a wee bit. We've also been producing our first kind of elaborate launch video for the Atlantic, which many of you might have seen on social media. Uh, recently we were up at Perth Airport filming with a Jaguar E-Type and a Tiger Moth, which was exciting. But the planning of that and the execution of that whole project was very complex and difficult. So our attention has been stretched um, quite drastically, just trying to cope with the orders and producing stuff. But it's good, it's good to be busy. However, like many small businesses, Marlow is not immune to the impacts of coronavirus. On March the 23rd this year, the UK government introduced restrictions which shut down the retail sector. And whilst that had vast negative impacts on retail and high street, it shifted everyone online to e-commerce. And as a result, our business has flourished. It's a complicated thing benefiting from a hugely upsetting pandemic where a lot of people are suffering and many are losing lives. Yet, as an e-commerce business, we are benefiting from people being locked down because they're shopping online and they're finding us for the first time. A lot of people are thinking more about well-being, mental health, um, readdressing what's important to them. Many are working from home, um, which is freeing up a lot of um, income from commuting. So there's a whole lot of reasons that e-commerce is benefiting from this situation. Production and assembly, which for us is done in Japan and Switzerland, they too have been impacted by this pandemic and it has manifested itself in a few ways um, whether it be staffing reductions or complete closures altogether but there's been a lot of positivity in the face of absolute crisis and that has caused hopeful projection situation where we have been in touch with our manufacturing partners weekly and have been told that production is on schedule and will be delivered on time and we have been working around that basis with an eye on the plan B at all times but as we've got closer to delivery I think the real impact of coronavirus is showing and as such a lot of what we had planned to arrive pre-Christmas is now delayed by some weeks or in other cases by months, forcing a couple of projects that were meant to land this year into next year. It's a bit of an unfortunate position for us because we started this series in March, or was it May? I can't remember, it's been so long. But we started this campaign as a way to generate momentum and get people excited about what we're doing this year and a kind of alternative launch method, if you like, where we would take you along on this journey and at the end of which we would have all these 
new ranges landing in sequence. But it's part of the reason that we haven't released any launch dates for any of our projects because each week has the potential to slip. Although it's frustrating for a lot of people, we have to be incredibly careful about what we're doing here because this situation, the coronavirus and the impact it's having on small businesses like us, it has the potential to shut the business down, ruin the business completely. You know, if you're not very, very, very careful about what you're doing, suddenly cash flow can become a real problem. So we're just keeping an eye on everything and we're trying our very best to weave this very delicate path. Oliver's doing an incredible job of taking us through this very strange situation. And hopefully, fingers crossed, we will continue doing that. So now we've made it through the first part of the storm um, and we have many bruises to show for it, for sure. We are now getting tantalizingly close to releasing some of our most exciting designs so far. So what was planned for this year, but many of which have slipped into next year, we have, and I've got my laptop here, just so I can remind myself, we've got the Atlantic, um, which is our first aviator's watch, which has been inspired by the dawn of flight. It was in our recent quarterly. If any of you have read that, you will have seen the Atlantic and the inspiration behind it. We have the Solent, which is my love affair with lighthouses and seafaring and navigating the seas. That's a really, really exciting project for us. We have the Coniston Black Edition, which many of you have been asking for. We have created a slightly different take on the Coniston. We have the Pacific, which many of you know as the Harport, which was the project code word as we were developing it. And that is our most elaborate and high level project to date. I've been wearing one of the prototypes now for about a month and it's, it's living up to every expectation that we had hoped for it. We have a number of projects that we have been working on but are a bit further afield, such as the 35mm, which is our foray into the smaller diameter world. Um, that's really exciting. Oliver's been wearing one of those prototypes now for a wee while and he absolutely loves it. We have the Bonneville and Air, which uses the Coniston chassis, but has been redesigned with the land speed records of the Campbell family. We have the Submersible, which is based on the framework of the Solent, but is geared more towards submarines and subsurface fairing. And finally, we have the Apollo, which is going to be our first look at a square watch. It's something that I'm incredibly excited about and I've been working on the design today, in fact. So we have the Atlantic, which is the dawn of powered flight. We then have the Pacific, which is the dawn of the jet age. And then we'll have the Apollo, which is space flight. So, Apologies to anyone who is expecting the Atlantic next week. Unfortunately, that's not going to be the case. Um, we are working round the clock to make sure that we get this um, project and all the other projects over the line. Um, we may have the opportunity to have a smaller batch of the Atlantics arrive before Christmas and we'll keep you updated about that. But we just keep going. You know, we have to keep focused and we have to keep our heads clear and try our very best to keep our head above this rising tide. It's very difficult and very complex and although I now have help here in the Perth office, we have a new um, colleague, Gabby. Many of you have spoke to her, many of you have emailed with her. Um, she's offering an incredible amount of relief for me so that I can get on to what I should be doing, designing watches and filming 
promotional campaigns, um, but we're getting there. Um, we need you to know that we're all working as hard as we can. And we're excited, you know, it, it, we, I think what runs through all of this, even though we're exhausted and we're, we're trying our very best to juggle as many plates, that's a mixed metaphor, but we're just, we're all doing our best and we're keeping ourselves together. So thank you for all your support. Thank you for taking the time to message us, um, both in email and on the Facebook fan page. We are watching all that is going on. Keep with us and we'll continue to do our very best.